Hello everyone, I'm here answering a student question about color, namely, where to start? Uh, you know, it's fascinating, you can learn so much about the theory of color and stuff, and then when faced with a blank slate, it's, you know, it's still terrifying. Uh, and so I wanted to go through some of the things that I think about when I'm just trying to get started and uh, hopefully finish a piece. Uh, you know, step one for me is always getting reference. So. Here I have just a really quick little dragon composition, and the idea is like he's sitting in a nest, and you can see the shell, and then uh, it's in like the middle of a broken down road that leads to this castle. What an inconvenient place for these adventurers. And they're on a timer because way off in the distance is Mama, coming to eat them. Uh, what a fascinating, stupid little plot, you know, classic Dungeons and Dragons fodder. Uh, so, uh, this is just a quick line drawing, I think, you know, I spent like five minutes on it, and now the question is, where do we go from here? For me, it's always reference first. So, over here in bridge, and you can get to bridge with, uh, option, or alt control O in Photoshop. Uh, how convenient that I had recently been on a dragon project, and therefore had a big pile of reference. And you can see where I go with this. On one hand, I've got stuff like this, where it's specifically an anatomy piece. Uh, stuff from other artists, where they perhaps solved all these problems and thought through the atmospherics. And hey, why not crib notes from them? You should understand the context of where your piece fits in a wide world of people who have probably faced the exact same problem. And I also have lots of stuff from real life, such as uh, things I might want to reference, uh, skeletons, and it doesn't even have to be this. You might just get on the internet and, you know, Google, I don't know, cold mountain. Or, I don't know, Rocky Mountain. These are all actual net mountains, I think. That's my problem. And grab something like this. Yeah, sure, this is a nice piece of reference. Why not? Uh, it has nothing to do with dragons, but maybe it just has the colors I like. Ooh, this is what I want. I click, copy image. Now one thing I oftentimes do is I will, if I have all these open in Bridge, it's just the one dumb tool I love in Bridge. Tool, Photoshop, uh, load files into Photoshop layers. And I'm going to hit escape because I already did this, so here's that example. And uh, how do I end up employing this? Well, one of my favorite things to do after this is have this reference available for me to see as I work. So this was my former background layer. I double clicked it to turn it into a regular layer. And now I'm going to use the crop tool. You can actually crop outward with the crop tool. And I'll create a new layer. Fill this with black. Move it down. I use control brackets to move my layers up and down. And onto this background, I will now hit F to switch my window layer uh, modes. Once I'm in windowed mode, I can pull this off and have basically both of these handy at once. And I usually prefer to just have all this in one giant Photoshop file. Uh, if you have all these files open separately, that's 20 different Photoshop files and it's going to kill your RAM if you. Uh, have all these open in a different program. It's not as, uh, it's like a secondary thing that you have to juggle, and that's no fun. So uh, I'll hit F to get back to this mode, and hit Control Tab to switch which document I'm looking at. So now, having done that, I can do what I really like doing, which is I'm going to just move these around until they're in all the places that I might want to just go look and color pick them. And I just find this to be like the most pleasant way to work. Uh, it means like I don't have to move from document to document. I have everything I need to look at right there. Uh, 
And one thing that I'll oftentimes do is reduce the file size or uh, the resolution of these because I really don't need all of it. And in fact, I don't want too much of it. I want this to be sort of more atmospheric in its uh, effect on me rather than uh, something that I am totally scared of moving off grid with. That one I don't need. It's funny because on my previous Dragon project that I was working on with this stuff, I ended up going totally off script and even though I had a Dragon that I planned out anatomically, I ended up switching over to something that was way cuter at the last minute. So where do I find these images? You know, Flickr is good. I'm oftentimes, my preference with the move tool is to have auto select turned off and I want to select by layer. And then when I want to select any one of these for movement, I will control click on it and that will change which layer I'm on. You can also right click and go like that, but I just find this is ideal. Now this is sort of, you know, way too much information at this point, I think. And we don't need all these as separate layers anymore. In fact, having them as separate layers increases Photoshop's wear and tear. So we actually want to purposefully get rid of it. And I'll crop it down to around there. And now I have everything I need to work with with this. I don't even need these as separate layers. So oftentimes from here, my next step is getting a color palette. And this can be something where you'll sometimes see artists do this as, I'll hit Control Shift N for new layer. Uh, it could be as simple as just picking five colors that you like and uh, making little pools of it with a uh, simple brush. So I'll ground, grab the hard round pressure size and with my opacity and flow at 100% each maybe I just select off of these and I think through rando colors. As long as you have something that is like the lightest light and the darkest dark. Oftentimes that's all you need. And having done this, once I start working on this actual piece, maybe I just color pick off of this. I'll make this a clipping mask to this. And so what's nice about this is you color pick off of these single single dots and maybe get something put together pretty fast. Another thing I've done in the past is I've literally googled like uh, a famous artist's color palette like um, Joseph McGurl palette. I'm over here Googling. So I might grab something like this, some sort of picture pulled right off of uh, YouTube or something. And why not paste that right in so that as I work, I'll actually like color pick off of his colors. Uh, another thing that I really love is the idea that I'm cribbing from other artists. So again, you know, a lot of times somebody like Wayne Reynolds already figured all this stuff out. And to some extent, it's like the dragon is the foreground and it's the dark element against the light element. Over here, it's a dark element against the light element. Maybe in a different context, such as a dungeon, it's a light element against a dark element. 
another thing that I'll oftentimes do is, you know, just to show you how random this can be, uh, I was doing this in class. Let's Google hamburgers or barbecue. What a stupid thing to Google. This has nothing to do with dragons, right? But it's fun to see, you know, how, I don't know, removed from the process. I can't remember the art idea. How postmodern you can get with this. I think that's postmodern. The idea that the artist is removed from the equation. So if I move that, uh, I might do something like paste this barbecue directly in. Uh, I'll place it over my entire image. Share. It's once again clipped to that. What if I now lock the pixels of this layer, which means that I can't ex extend beyond them. And I'll just go filter, blur, motion blur. I'll just blur it a whole bunch in some direction. And hey, look at that. We have like this weird melange of light colors and dark colors. Or maybe that's all I need is, you know, it comes from some sort of natural source. Maybe from here I start color picking over there. Actually, what I think I'm going to do is get some of this green. And this is like uh, just so fun because there's so little, um, there's so little at stake at this early stage. Like you should feel comfortable making a total mess. Now I think what I'm doing right now is another uh, step here, which is uh, do a color study. And what I mean by color study is I am not thinking about correct layers. I'm not thinking about where all this stuff ends up. I'm just thinking about how to make a mess and have something where I have the idea of the colors sort of in place even though I'm not doing anything else. Now you'll notice my usual way of working is actually just uh, one brush, one layer, and oftentimes you can't see it but my hand is basically at all times on my alt control shift area and then also in this ergonomic setup I basically always have my fingers on the bracket keys so that as I work I oftentimes enlarge it or shrink it. And at all times, I'm just like occasionally tapping Alt to pull up that eyedropper and painting stuff in. Now, having started this, my next thought is, I guess, uh, how do I get a sense of my like darkest darks and lightest lights? And you know, it always goes back to trying to mimic reality, which is why I think uh, all those master copies we do are so important, because you end up with the sense of not necessarily uh, exactly what to do, but having lived in another artist's mentality for a while. And uh, you probably start to pick up ideas of how to like just grab what you need really fast and get it in there. So I think like one thing I would do at this point is try and imagine where are my light source is. Uh, if you imagine this as a top-down view, I'll create a new layer, and this is our top-down view. You'll notice that I can color pick off my reference too. So imagine this is a top-down view, and here's our dragon. 
and here's our sunshine. We basically have only a few options here that we have to worry about in terms of thinking about our light source. Uh, one is that our light source is right here and our dragon is you know, imagine this is the dragon's face there's the tail, there's the wings. So if I have this layer called sun, you can see why I prefer to have auto select turn off because I want to move this around and just think through this problem. On one hand, I could have this light directly in front. What does that mean for us? Well, that might mean that our dragon there's more light on this side. And darker on this side. It also changes uh, how these mountains look. So in this case, I think like uh, what you would end up with is a sort of darker side of the mountain over here and a lighter side on this side. On the other hand, Maybe this little moat of sunshine is on the side. And that changes things. So in this instance, I'm going to name that line and lock it. So instead, uh, what if uh, it's lit on the side? Well, maybe that means that we start having a sort of backlit look. Our dragon is actually quite dark on this side. And this changes how I might compose things. So you'll notice that I'm actually kind of just uh, thinking about dark versus light, but I'm also not being too concerned with getting it right right off the bat. Maybe there's like some sort of distant smoke here. The benefit of which is that our dragon, when framed against this smoke, we get that nice little highlight coming off. And peaking, uh, because this is backlit at this point, because the sun's over here, in this case maybe I need to like think through that problem and actually like put the sun into the shot somewhere so that it can illuminate us. And this changes the reference that you're going to use too. So if this is what you're looking at now, uh, this might mean that instead you want pictures of sunsets where we have this sense of a backlighting. Uh, another thing that you might end up having is the sun over here. I think my dragon light got kind of messed up. <laughs> uh, but if the sun is behind the dragon, that would once again change this into a different lighting setup. Now you'll notice that I'm not giving a shit about flats or where things are positioned or my layer orders. I'm still operating with a strong sense of play right now. So what if this is instead over here? I don't know. And the dragon is backlit. Or rather, the light is behind it. This is also sort of a place where we have this sort of rim light. I 
And maybe this gives like a cool shadow coming over here. I like that. Uh, you know, I really do love working with this sense of like just a total mess. And this means that our little adventurers down here, our stick salesmen, are casting shadows like that way. That's pretty dramatic. On the other hand, what if we have the light over here? This is probably the closest to like Rembrandt lighting over here. In which case, we're basically looking at this with some sense of a light on this side of the giant. Maybe above. And on that side that way. Uh, there's two things we need to consider here. Number one is the idea of framing. So I think usually this means that we have either a back, dark background and then something the dragon is illuminating it or we have the opposite. We have a light background and the dragon is in shadow against it. Or not necessarily in shadow but uh, against the incident. And then, in a sort of localized color scenario, this means that. Oh, why isn't it working? Ah, no wonder I was painting on my son. <laughs> this is why layers are the worst. Just merge it all down. So in this scenario, oftentimes I start uh, just thinking about this as a simple uh, idea of light against dark or dark against light. And you can see this in uh, some of these stuff too. This little crocodile is light against dark. This dude is sort of dark against light with a little rim light coming in. A lot of Wayne Reynolds dragons are dark against light, a dark dragon with a light background, and then he puts these sort of Fresnel rim lights on everything. Something like this, dark against light, and yeah, we can then see the subtleties of this dragon, like we have a shadow right here uh, where it's lit from uh, slightly below less than it is slightly above, but both of these as a group are against this light background. Over here we have dark against light, but also over here we have light against dark in this reference of a Komodo dragon. So oftentimes this might be something where if you are depicting your dragon in something of a dungeon perhaps, you have the darkness of the dungeon and therefore the subject is lit against it, sort of coming forward. Or if it's out in uh, the wild, you have to contend with this bright, bright sky. Again, reference is always going to help you out with this. But I think right now, I want to talk about the second step of this, which is how can I simplify my problem here? So oftentimes what I do here is uh, just do a simple cube rendering sensibility. So let's say I know that I want this to be a sort of lit background, right? I know that I've got the sky here. Somehow this is going to be more lit rather than less lit. So against this light background, I'm going to render just a simple cube to think through this lighting problem. And this idea of simple cubes is really handy because a lot of times you can make some sort of equivalent where you think through uh, which side you're looking at. I'll do it from two angles actually. So if I have these two cubes and the light is coming from the side, maybe from here I just think through which side is the darkest Which side is the lightest? So maybe this one is 
one of this color. And you'll notice that a lot of times I'm doing something where I just use a tap of this in there. And I just do it one time with this low, uh, with a low flow, actually max flow. And that one tap is enough to mix a little bit of this with a little bit of that. And therefore, the mixed together color is somewhere in between there. And that's basically all I'm doing is looking for that midtone or like this slowly worked up value based on the reference of what's near it. So a lot of times this just ends up being one thing is the lightest. Right there. One thing is the lightest, one thing is the darkest, and one thing is in between them. On this cube, maybe it's closer to the bottom. Or maybe on this one, we can see the sort of backlighting more. Now this green is too light, so how about I just do one stroke of this dark nasty blue in there and then I color pick off of what was in between the two of them and that helps me out. So once I have this idea I'll use this as a reference when painting my dragon so a lot of times this means I just grab from this dark plane and I paint on the underside stuff where I know it has to be darker. Uh, maybe on this, I know that this is sort of the front color. And then this is my backlighting color, wrapping around the other side. Blink, don't squint. Now, having talked through all this stuff, I think, like, next up would just be to start getting this stuff in. So I really like this atmospheric one. But I do want some of those barbecue colors in here. And I think I'm going to go with something closer to uh, these ones where it's sort of backlit, but maybe... Slightly on the underside, too dark. And this is what I enjoy is just making a mess. Don't worry about whether you get it right or wrong. You can figure that stuff out later. Now, it's not interesting to talk about compared to a lot of this other stuff, but this is one thing that I occasionally do take a break to do is uh, organize my layers. So this is just the 21 or the, the document size that I know I eventually need. And I want this to have, I think, something like that really Spartan mountainside look. Actually kind of colder colors. I have a strong urge right now to actually 
go hunt more reference. But again, that can, in its own way, be detrimental. These little egg shells are also just a very handy color theory test. Because what is an eggshell if not just a big round shape? And to some extent, it's nice that I can just get this idea of roundness. And in the same way that I did that sort of other shape, what if I? Just think through what an eggshell would look like, or what an egg would look like in this lighting scenario. And then, when I go on to render this one, I can literally just color pick it and find my way there. So yeah, I think I want this to be like backlit. I think that was the one that seemed the coolest. And so that might mean I have some darker sky over here. Now I still think I'm doing this right now where uh, I'm doing a color study. I still don't think I'm at the point where I know what I want. And once I have that, then I'll stop being such a jerk about erasing my dragon every time I paint it and actually make some sort of flats and clipping masks and uh, start working on this a little more orderly. Let me get some of this straw color in here for the nest. How do you paint a bird nest? Look at bird nests.
Anyways, if you were doing this with real paint, uh, the way that you would oftentimes work is just constantly putting a new layer of paint on top of the old. And that's something I try to keep in mind as well when I'm working here, is uh, <clears throat> how can I just not care about this and accidentally go over that road? Oh no. Why is that okay? Because I can just go right back over it. Anyways, I hope this gives you some stuff to think about in terms of coloring, and uh, I look forward to seeing these final projects.